What I'm interested in understanding a bit better is how social movements get started and when do they take off. So it might involve environmental protection, it might involve worker safety, it might involve sex equality, it might involve some understanding of democracy or freedom. And the basic idea is that there are two things that are pivotal. One is that we often have judgments inside our head that we never express to anyone else. We keep quiet about our experiences or our beliefs, and something has to trigger a revelation of what we actually think and want. And that something is often the statements and actions of other people. So that's the second point, social interdependencies. So if you have both uh, quiet on the part of many people about what they really care about, and if you have social dependencies such that if you get the right kind of early communication or action, then you can create a flood of interest in a topic. Then uh, large-scale movements are often uh, unpredictable, and when they start to happen, they can happen in a hurry. Environmentalism is one example. Movements across the world for worker safety, those are other examples. And the great movements of the last 200 years, uh, whether for good or not so much for good, have the same characteristics. I'm going to use the Me Too movement as a recent example where there were many women actually all, all over the world who had experiences which in the worst cases were actually rape uh, and in the let's say less bad but not good cases were unwanted sexual attention that didn't culminate in violence. And women silenced themselves, also a number of men but mostly women. And what happened with the Me Too movement is that you had these two features that I've identified uh, coming to fruition, fruition simultaneously, where women who had silenced themselves started to say, Me Too. And when the, uh, the sheer number of women who said that started to reach a certain level, then you could have a flood of concerns and complaints. So I'm, of course, um, enthusiastic about the movement for sex equality and uh, for um, uncovering and deterring sexual violence and uh, uncovering and deterring sexual harassment. And the movement, for that reason, has been a step forward for equality. The dynamics of the movement are at least as interesting, I think, as the uh, evaluation of whether it's a good or bad thing. That is, it's a little like a clue about how movements throughout human history, really, have gotten fueled and sometimes really taken off. With respect to social media in general, though there's been, correctly, a great deal of attention to things that aren't ideal, like the spread of, let's say, rage and uh, brutality, there's also been extraordinary uh, benefits from social media where people who have, let's say, mental health problems like depression or anxiety have found help, they found communities that can help them, where people who've encountered, let's say, in their community some risk, it may be a highway safety risk, it may be a risk of crime, have been able to draw that attention to other people and the authorities. So every day social media is working to counteract problems that people face uh, that can put their lives at risk even. With respect to democracy, social media, uh, I think, is on balance a terrific thing because it's something by which citizens, even if they don't have access to the newspapers or the television stations, can make their views uh, heard. They can get attention uh, drawn uh, by, if they're lucky, a non-trivial number of people. And it is right to say that social media have a downside. That is, they can fuel cascades of uh, uh, error or cascades of rage, but like an automobile, which can have a downside, or a cell phone, which certainly has a downside for those who look at it a little too much, uh, it's, it's a net plus. And I think what we need to do in terms of our action is use it in positive directions for democracy. And all nations, it's fair for them to consider uh, what are the best policies to adopt with respect to social media that will counteract multiple risks, one of which, of course, is uh, risk to personal privacy.